Welcome back. It's time now for some 814 Eats. We are back in the 814 kitchen with Chef Doug Simon from the casino at Lakemont Park. Chef Doug, thank you so much for coming back. It is great to be it back. It is so great to have people come back in the kitchen. And it's been nice, you know, to go out and visit and things like that. But the smells right here in the 814 kitchen, absolutely fantastic. So how are things uh, going? What, what's, what's new over at the casino? Uh, there's not a lot new at the casino right now. Unfortunately, we are, you're we right. are holding on and we're just waiting for summertime to kick in and, uh, you know, for people to come back into our facility and, and party. Yeah, definitely. Um, what are we What are we making today? Well, it's a uh, holiday time this year, so I'm going to do two things really quickly. Okay. We're working on uh, matzo ball soup for Passover. Okay. So that's what I'm going to make actually today, and then I'm going to show off a dish that's great for Easter. Uh, it's a little bit of a change. It's called porchetta. It's a traditional Italian dish. Okay. We're experimenting with that right now for C2 for the summer. Awesome. So I'm going to show you a sandwich okay. uh, made with that because that's what we're going to focus on. But this is a great roast and uh, there are a couple recipes that will be on uh, the website. Uh, some different ways of making it. Ours is stuffed with dill and dry mustard and there's Ooh. another one that I made that's made with uh, bacon and lots of garlic and herbs. So a like lot of really fun flavors. Awesome. But as far as matzo balls are concerned, okay. um, there are a lot of different ways to make these. Mine is a little bit more, almost like making a mousse. Okay. So I have separated... Matzo mousse? Matzo mousse. Yeah, actually. It sounds Italian. Um, yes. Hey, look at that matzo mousse over here. Matzo mousse. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, <laughs> stiffly whipped egg whites and egg yolks are combined. And these egg yolks I put a little bit of parsley into. Okay. So you've got a little bit of color when the matzo ball comes out. We're going to take some of the, about a third of the white, we're going to fold that gently into the yolk. And once that is combined together, we're going to move it back into the whites. Okay. This is any type of mousse that you would be making with an egg white. This is typically the way that this is done. I you realize really that that's how mousses were made. Yes. <laughs> mousses, mousse? Remind mousses? me, I'll tell you a joke later, okay. but it's probably not meant for prime time. That's fair enough. So as you have these, <laughs> as you have these two ingredients mixed together, or three ingredients actually, again, very lightly moving the, the spatula through this because you don't want to knock down the height that okay. you've whipped into your whites. So once that's pretty well combined, matzo meal is going to go in in small amounts. And we're going to, let's say, maybe a third or a quarter of what we've got there because, again, we want to combine it. We don't want to knock down the volume. Okay. So and ma you can matzo see meal is something that, that you can pick up at your, your grocery matzo store? Matzo meal. Got it. Right here. Awesome. Very, usually very easily available. I actually wondered the other day when I was making this whether or not you could do something like this with cornmeal. Okay. I'm sure you could yeah. and make a different style of dumpling. And that's what this really is. It's a dumpling. It's, if it's done right, it's light, it's fluffy. It's one of my favorite things to eat. When my kids were growing up, I'd make them all the time. A little time consuming, but not too bad. I mean, ingredients are easy pretty inexpensive and you know f and very filling because this yeah. stuff you know it could land like a like a rock <laughs> in the bottom of your belly <laughs> unless you make them light and fluffy like I do a nice and fluffy dumpling and a good fluffy matzo ball and you can make them in different sizes because uh, they're gonna blow up in the water but you can see this is starting to get pretty uh, pretty firm here and you don't always have to get all of the meal in you just want to get enough in to form it into these, you know, into this, this thickened paste yeah. here. And then once that's done, we're going to roll it and we're going to drop it into very heavily salted water. Okay. So I didn't salt any of this water here, but regular iodized salt, and don't be bashful. And a Ooh. wide, seriously, because that's where all the flavor is going to come from. Okay. All I was right. Ask and then later you're going to put this into chicken soup and the chicken soup also is going to have a lot of flavor. So you've got flavor coming from multiple different things. And, you know, when you make the matzo balls, if the soup is made, you can literally um, store them in the soup and they will absorb some of the flavor of the soup. So you can see how this is, you know, sticking to the spatula here. I'm going to just put a little bit of oil yeah. on my hands. Well, there you go. Take a little bit of this. You get about seven balls out of these. And when you roll them, 
Gently. Like really, really gently so that you're just forming it into a ball. Because you don't want to squish ball. them. You don't want them to. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm just going to drop that right in Boop. there. Once they're in the pot, they are, you cover them and they take probably 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes. The longer you cook them, the more you're going to get to the inside because you're cooking for obviously from the outside yeah, in. Definitely. So you want to be able to get that. And covering them keeps them from drying out. And if you look in this pot here, you'll see these are the finished product. Oh, look at that. Yeah, and they're, they've blown oh, they're up huge. really nicely. They get really nice and big. Wow. Now, while we're, while we're letting that go, I'm going to just talk to you about well, these. Well, actually, actually, we're going to talk about that because we're going to take a quick break. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with Chef Doug Simon, see the finished result, and talk about the porchetta in just a bit. Stay Perfect. with us. Perfect.